you have tickets in Halo ITSM that you create manually on some repetitive basis and would prefer to automate this work? If so, stick around and we'll go through a feature that I think will really help you out. Hi, I'm Jonathan Burdick, Senior Solutions Consultant and Architect with Excalibur Data Systems. And today we're going to go through Halo ITSM's feature called Scheduled Tickets. Now, ticket scheduling is a topic that comes up all the time, and it's really not a surprise. Um, most organizations uh, that we've worked with have a, just a ton of repetitive work uh, and have to not only get that work accomplished, uh, but worse yet, have to remember to get that work accomplished. And sometimes we encounter clients who have a tremendous workload in this regard. And so it becomes that much more difficult to, to not only just keep the work moving, but to remember to keep the work moving. Uh, so fortunately, in Halo ITSM, we have a pretty robust ticket scheduling feature. And so what I'm planning to do is take you through where we can find that, and then we'll walk through uh, the configuration, and I'm going to show you some of the really nice features uh, that the system has available for this. So from your landing page, uh, we're going to find configuration. Then we'll be on the lookout for tickets under core features. And then finally, under optional features, uh, we will look for scheduled tickets. We don't have any scheduled tickets uh, here yet, so we'll click on new in the upper right hand corner and we'll be presented with the configuration page for this for these records. Okay, so under the scheduled ticket configuration, we have six items in the menu bar at the top. All right, schedule, users, values, to do list related assets and children. The only two that are required to pull this off uh, can be found under schedule and under values. The users, the to-do list, related assets and children, these are all optional features uh, that you can append to this particular scheduled ticket to give your work a bit more depth or color um, with regard to the content um, and the uh, process or even the, the workflow that has to be um, initiated in order to you know, fully complete this piece of work. So we're gonna start with the schedule piece and we obviously have to give this a name. We'll maybe select sample scheduled ticket. We can mark these as active or inactive, but by default they're active. So the, the premise is, is that if you're gonna come in here to do this work, we'll take one step out of this equation for you. And when you're done here, this will be ready to roll. You don't have to come back in here and make this an active thing. Now, the remainder of this section of the configuration is really, uh, is all, uh, uh, all associated with the type of scheduling. I think that you will see a lot of real power here from the features that are available. As we move down that configuration space, you're you're presented with this calendar at the very top. And I think that just from a usability standpoint, uh, just know that the calendar is sort of an output. It's a, it's a one-way uh, piece uh, here. It's going to communicate to you what we configure down in the scheduling space. It does give you the option to navigate around the the various the, the, the calendar so you don't have to refer to some outboard calendar system or your email system or whatever to come up with um, the scheduling opportunity. But if you're trying to click on a particular date here in the interface, it's not gonna do anything for you, all right? So really the navigation of the calendar here is the is the one input that you can provide. As we do the configuration, you will see the, the, the respective dates begin to highlight. Now, where I think this really has some power is in the options that this gives us from a scheduling point of view. 
So there's really two core types of scheduling. And then in my mind, there's almost a third, I'm not sure if we would really call it that, but you know, for our intents and purposes, you know, maybe we will, you know, we'll call it option 2A. Uh, so we have, we have kind of the default piece, which you see in a lot of systems, which is selected days of the week. And then uh, we can say that we would like to uh, have this start at, say, 9 a.m. And we'll start that on, we'll backdate that to July 1st. And then perhaps we can say we would like this to run every Monday um, and perhaps every Friday. All right, and we'll end that by, uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do this on a, on a calendar year basis. So when we get to December 31st, let's, let's check back on these to see if we really need them. Uh, so we'll have this end by 1231. Now, we can avoid holidays or we can allow these records to be created on holidays. So by default, it just it will continue to create whether it falls on on a, on a holiday in the in the in the system, but we could alleviate that. Um, and so then the, the record would get created around the holiday, uh, not on the holiday. But what are the other nice features of this, even in the basic configuration, is that uh, we have this can this item number of days ahead of schedule to create so you can see that in the calendar visualization at the top you know we've checked off Monday and Friday all right and uh, uh, so but it's possible that that maybe instead of creating the records on this particular day that we that our work in our organization is due at that particular time and that could certainly be the case. So what this option does is allow us to create the record ahead of schedule to give staff time to actually meet the deadline. And that's a really, really nice feature to have. We can set the number of days ahead of the in the schedule uh, by just inputting that number. Now, functionally here, um, I would actually put your cursor in the box itself and type in the the number of days that you want. Um, as soon as I exit the uh, box, you'll see that the calendar immediately changes to the prior day, uh, since we only put one day ahead um, in here. Um, the reason I say to actually input the number is that because if you begin clicking over on the on the spinner buttons, you'll see right there, I haven't taken my mouse off of this and the number just, just rapidly increases. And if I hover over the, the bottom one, it rapidly decreases. So this can be a little bit of a, um, it can get it, it can get away from you. So that's why I typically just type the number in uh, there. Now, the other main way to schedule is by uh, doing a day of the month and an interval uh, on that. So if I were to schedule for day of the month, now what I can do is I can say, well, irrespective of whether something is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I can input that I would like this to happen on the first of the month, the second of the month. I can have this happen monthly, or I could uh, have it start at some other you know, start at some other time and I can have it repeat, um, you know, on a particular basis. Um, so that is really nice too. So what you have there is what I would consider the second scheduling type. So it's irrespective of the day of the week from a name standpoint. And it will, if you want it to fall on the second of the month, it will do the second of the month, um, et cetera, et cetera. The, th the third piece that I'm talking about is if I go back to the selected days of the week, if I hit the frequency, now what happens is that I'm presented with some options uh, like first of the month, second of the month, third of the month. Um, in the US, we don't typically use fortnightly, but 
um, you know, our friends in the UK would likely use that. Uh, but if I were to say I would like this to create on the third of the month, what this really means is that it's going to do this work within the third, the third time that these days are found in the month uh, that we are looking at. So that is, to me, a, a nice compounded feature on, on the selected days of the week. So you could actually get pretty, pretty accurate here uh, around um, not only, hey, I would like this to, I, I need this to run on a Monday or I need it to run on a Friday, uh, but I really only need it to run in that middle of the month space. Uh, and then it will fall on whatever date uh, our selected days uh, fall on. All right, so that's, I think that those uh, options are actually really, really powerful. So once you have, uh, if I were just to take this back to maybe the default for now, once you have the schedule set up, then uh, what I would do is skip over the users piece and just go straight to values because values uh, is an assembly, uh, it's a compilation of the attributes that we actually will need um, to, to fulfill this ticket scheduling. So we've got all of the items here on this form that have the red asterisk and this is where we would fill in all of our required pieces. So this is a you know, this is a service request. This is our test scheduled service request. And we can set the status, the team, the agent that would be assigned that record, the priority, and all of the core pieces that we would expect to see um, as part of that record. So once you have the schedule pieces all itemized and the values, you can stop here. Uh, if you want to uh, create some additional elements of perhaps these to-do lists, or you can attach related assets to the records or actually create additional child records here, you can go ahead and do that. Just as an aside, this really interesting piece here that the creation rules can be used, can be added to delay the creation of a child template until they need to be created. So that's that's a really interesting element where we could have a scheduled ticket, uh, and then we could have a sub scheduled ticket uh, as well. So we've got some really nice depth in this feature. Uh, and so when we take a look at this entire thing as a whole. You know, again, I'm probably repeating myself, but this this feature has some real depth uh, and breadth that that should be able to accommodate what you need to do in your organization. So, in closing, uh, just remember that we have, uh, you know, we're finding this under configuration tickets, scheduled tickets, and we have a variety of different ways that we can perform that scheduling based on your organizational need for that particular work, uh, and that the only two pieces that are truly required lie under the scheduling piece and the values piece. The rest of these are optional. They'll just add some depth to the record keeping, uh, but they are not required. So uh, that's a wrap on scheduled tickets. I hope this added to your uh, continued understanding of the features that are available in Halo ITSM. So until we meet again, have a great day.